G'day and welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to be taking a look at, oh, how do I phrase it, the top 10 mistakes. I'm going to say farmers, but it, I'm gearing it more to new farmers make when setting up their farm. Um, it's, the reason I say focusing on new farmers is because some of these mistakes might not cost me on this farm as much money as they will cost a new farmer. In fact, somebody I have known or well, I won't say n it's not like we're friends, it's more like steam buddies. Um, but somebody I knew recently emailed me and said, hmm, this isn't working in the game. And all I could do was shake my head and say, it's a rookie mistake. And they've been playing the game for a long time. Anyway, I make videos about helping you save money and avoid costly mistakes on a regular basis. So if you find these types of videos useful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you will be notified when the next video comes out. Now, we're going to work backwards from least costly, you know, it's a minor mistake, eh, no big deal. It'll cost you a bit of money, but it won't be anything huge. But the first one is paying too much for supplies. By that, I mean... Your seeds and your fertilizer, for example. Let's take this pallet of solid fertilizer here, which is uh, 19, well, 1920 dollars for a thousand liters, or seeds, which are the same thing, 900 for a thousand liters. And we'll look at the big bags. So seeds are 800 for 1,000 liters. And this is 1820 for 1,000 liters. <clears throat> so you're getting the same amount, but you're paying $100 more. Now, not a big deal at first when you've still got your starting fields. But as you expand and you need more, so four bags of seed, for example, to fill a, a bigger cedar, you've spent or you've missed, missed out on $400 or wasted $400 if you want to look at it that way. Is there anything like seeds? Pioneer have uh, pallets of seeds here. It's nine fifty, so it's some well for a thousand and fifty liters. So it's somewhere in the middle. Um, so anyway, that's probably the most common mistake people make. And fortunately, I mean, it's it, it'll cost you a couple hundred dollars, but it's easy enough to recover from. The next thing I want to go into is selling vehicles or equipment you don't need. Always bring it to the store if you're going to sell it. <coughs> the difference can be, depending on the vehicle, 
Uh, I don't know how to... I know how to check. I just don't know... Which one is which? 30,000? And it's got 1.3 hours on it? Oh, that's the old truck. Okay, so it's, it's definitely this truck. So it says 30,743. If I was to sell it, just using the sell screen. bring it to the shop and I do a quick repair on it it's worth 33,843 so for something small like this I'm missing out on three four thousand dollars when you start getting into larger equipment that costs more than a pickup truck does, like a tractor, that's going to start to add up. And that's three on the pickup truck, that's $3,000 you could have used somewhere else. While we're at the shop, Let's talk about maintenance. Not doing regular maintenance on a vehicle can really add up. My, if you watch my maintenance video, um, I forget what it's called. Um, oh, how to, how to reduce maintenance costs? Uh, if you just type it that in um, the search, it'll show bring up the video for you. But how to reduce maintenance costs? And the biggest thing is to do your maintenance on a regular basis. In the video, it shows you a tractor I repaired will use the basic 6M tractor, John Deere, and one hour cost me $113, and then the next hour cost me a little bit more, I think it was $114 or $115. I had an identical tractor that I hadn't repaired, and we carried on for a little while, and it ended up costing me to repair the tractor I hadn't repaired on a regular basis, about $400 more to repair, divided over the four or five months, than the tractor that it had its repair work done on a regular basis. Uh, again, four or $500 when you're starting out, it's not a huge deal. Um, but when you start getting into tractors that cost four hundred thousand, um, let me look this up. There we go. I knew I'd saved this spreadsheet. Uh, <clears throat> it was the John Deere eight R four ten. And the John Deere 8RX 410, um, both of those, after one hour, cost me anywhere from $317 for the 8R, because it's not as pricey as the 8RX, but the 8RX cost me $347. <coughs> so that's just after one hour of use. Um, so 
so don't let your maintenance go too long um now i say don't rush into mods without researching them first and the reason for that is twofold some mods will end up costing you more money um because there's a certain set of modders out there that feel the game the base game is too easy so they release mods to increase the difficulty of the game for example i've used this as an example before the bakery mod that requires water um in addition to the regular supplies um somebody else made one called the uh, basically the chocolate cereal factory so you, instead of you selling your valuable chocolate to the grocery store or whoever else will take it you have to ship it to the cereal factory It doesn't make any different cereal than the regular cereal factory. It does. It just requires the extra input of chocolate, um, because the author felt that since they sell uh, the box looks like Count Chocula cereal, that the factory should require cereal to run. So you're basically, if you, you know you download that, you're wasting your chocolate now there are certain mods that are worthwhile and I'm trying to remember uh, I'll give you an example the first one is the helper admin I downloaded this I read the description, it says, you know, um, basic number of helpers is six. Um, didn't really talk about being able to, uh, I wasn't too worried about the, the labor cost because it didn't really get talked about in the description of the mod. Uh, the other thing was, it talked about the ability to name your helpers. So instead of helper A has finished the task, it now says helper Andy has finished his task or her task. So I just kind of, you know, installed it, left it at that. Didn't think too much about it. It wasn't until I was doing the horse video that I looked at up further because it said it pays daily riding uh, of helpers for horses and that was when I noticed it defaults to a thousand dollars an hour for a helper well base game is three hundred dollars per hour see what i mean about making sure you know exactly what the mod does and i 2.2 uh, so i can set it to 200 dollars an hour i can set my overtime multiplier in case you didn't know there was overtime in the game there's overtime between 6 and 10 and then 10 and 6 in the morning Anyway, had I run on much longer on my this farm, it would have probably ended up costing me a fortune. I was wondering why last month's um, worker costs was so high, considering it was you know July isn't a hugely busy month on the farm. Now, speaking of. I'll do this one while we're talking about AI helpers and 
I'm guilty of this. I should know better. <clears throat> but to keep an eye on your AI helpers. This field was canola and it got harvested. So I sent this helper out, the 8RX, with a... Oh, oh, da, da, da. Trying to think of the right word here. Help me out, people. Subsoiler. Uh, because I didn't have a cultivator handy down at this farm. Well, when I came down to quickly check and see what was going on, as you can see, the helper must have had well we'll open that up so you can see again properly just a little bit left on the field on the left enough that he started to subsoil or see how it just covers both the edges of the field um, anyway for whatever reason, he started to subsoil my cornfield. Boy, was I pissed. Other things I've seen AI workers do, um, they'll get stuck on something, and it won't always... Uh, stop the AI worker. He won't actually stop doing what he was doing. Um, sometimes you, for the most part, you're lucky. And if the AI worker runs into trouble, he'll stop. But once in a while, you might get a message saying AI worker is blocked by and it, well, it doesn't tell you what it's blocked by, but AI worker Charlie is blocked. <clears throat> if you ignore the message, you run the risk of them just continuing blocked and they just sit there until they're unblocked. So you're paying them to sit there. Um... But sometimes, if they get blocked, they will just stop, turn the engine off, and wait. So whenever I get a message saying there is something unusual going on with an AI worker, I always go to check it out. Um... Uh, another thing that a lot of people have a tendency to do is they <clears throat> upgrade for the wrong reasons. As you can see, this is the tractor. Uh, it needs a wash. I apologize for that. But this is your starting tractor that comes with the Elm Creek Farm. I'm still using it and it's got 14 hours on it more or less. Its counterpart I use even more because I use it in my haying operation. So they both get used on a regular basis. The reason I have bigger tractors is because now that the farm is the size it is. Some of these fields require a decent sized cultivator. Um, so that, you know, I need the John Deere 350 or 410 for some of those heavy tasks. So don't always think you have to get rid of the tractor. Um, it's all going to depend on how much money you have. 
what I did with this one. This is my starter farm. This is the one where I made the complete beginner's guide video and just continued to play it. <clears throat> but I kept this one. I still have somewhere over the here. Look at all those eggs I gotta sell. Um, is it over here? Yeah. I still have the cultivator that I upgraded to because that tractor could pull it and it could pull that seed drill. It could def uh, they definitely pull the roller, the weeder, and the sprayer. So everything I needed it to do, it could still do. Like I said, it wasn't until the farm got big enough that I actually decided to upgrade. And by, I think it was the John Deere 7R350 at first, and then I eventually upgraded from there. <coughs> now, the other reason I say... the right tractor for the right job is that cultivator that I just showed you that was the original cultivator that I started out with on the farm. This tractor pulls it just perfectly. If I was to go and get the 8R or the 8RX, oh, it would have no trouble at all pulling it. But it would go through more fuel and have a higher maintenance cost because it is a much more expensive vehicle with a much larger engine. So it would end up costing me instead of benefiting me. The next two are kind of tied for <clears throat> equally as important. Um, the first one is making sure you do all your field care properly. You mulch, you cultivate or plow, then you seed, then you roll, then you fertilize, lime if needed before seeding. And did I say then you roll right after you've seeded? Yeah, so you rolled your seed bed. Anyway, that should give you 100% yield. Uh, now, not everybody does it because, well, what's 2%? Well, I sold canola, I think it was, or soybeans. Anyway, it was $187,000 worth. Um, two percent of that would have been three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, would have brought it down to a hundred and eighty-three, or slightly less. <clears throat> but again, you know, it's one of those things where you. You let it slide once. And the missed opportunity cost of, well, $3,000 times a couple of fields, all of a sudden you've missed out on ten to $20,000. Um, I know I am bad too because I sometimes forget to mulch. In fact, I hate mulching. Um, I don't know why the game introduced mulching because all of, well, pretty much all of today's modern tillage equipment, um, I don't know about Europe because Giants is in Europe, but in North America, most of today's tillage equipment is designed basically to 
mulch, bury, and prepare the seed bed. So if you watch Millennial Farmer, you will see how he uses his Wissick uh, cultivator. It chops up the stalks, the same as mulching, and then the discs bury it under the ground so it'll decompose faster. And then he's got a roller basket on the end of it that tries to break up, break up the clumps to smooth out the field. And then they come by once again in the spring um, and just when it's dry enough, prepare the seed bed. So yeah, I'm guilty of not mulching all the time, but when you're starting out, every little bit helps. The other one I wanted to quickly mention is especially if you're using AI workers, is not taking advantage of the field shape. Um, trying to think of a good example here. Well, this let's take this field. So if you're using an AI work, he, so you go up this side, he gets this end and he turns around and he comes down this side. And if you've ever watched an AI worker, it's just not a simple turnaround. It's like a, a three point jobby. And it takes twice as long as if you were to do it yourself. Um, sadly, there are many times you need an AI worker. So make sure you set them off on the most efficient path back and forth, not side to side, because they'll spend 90% of their time turning. Um, next up, we're almost at the top positions, is buying what you don't need. Um... This is my sugarcane harvest. Believe it or not, this is plenty of field space to keep the sugar factory in business for a year. That's how well sugarcane yields. I'm using this to harvest it. That way I don't have to pay for the self-propelled machine. And I've got two trailers down there, which I fill my big tr tractor trailer with, and away I go. Um, if you saw, I'll show you on the map, if you see by the railroad tracks here in the grain mill, I have sugar beet, also needed for the sugar factory because that's the second production, so that way the factory's doing two productions at once. Because I only need it for about an hour or two in harvest season, it's more economical for me to lease right now the harvester, harvest the field, and then return the lease. Do not, and I have done this myself, and I don't know if I mentioned this already, do not forget to return the lease. Um, I forget what it was. But I leased so something. Oh, it was the olive harvester. <clears throat> for my small olive patch, uh, which is not big enough for me to justify the purchase of an olive harvester, at least not yet. Um, when I have money to throw around, I might just buy, buy one anyway. Um, but I forgot to return it because I was too busy bringing my olives up to sell at the olive or the oil factory. So I ended up paying, oh, 
uh, when I, I woke up the next morning at nine o'clock, it told me what my leasing fee was for the day. And I was like, what? I'm not leasing anything. And I checked and sure enough, I was leasing. So oh, don't make that mistake. That's kind of a big one. That will cost you money, especially on a big piece of equipment. Okay, and the last two kind of go hand in hand. And that's either... We're talking about rushing either into productions or animals. Both can be costly. Um, I'm just trying to think what one of the... Um, well, animals. We'll, take, we'll use animals as an example, and the same thing applies to um, the production facilities. We'll go to the animal dealer because I want to show you the price. <coughs> so, most animal pens cost, uh, and I hate paddocks because they're so small. Um, cow barns, 254000 and it'll hold 90 cows. The horse barn is. 125 which is actually a pretty good price but it'll and it'll hold 14 horses um horses are 500 dollars a piece so 500 times 14 let's say you would try and fill that up that's $7,000 on top of $125,000. Brings you to a grand total of $132,000. <clears> and if you haven't watched the video yet on how to profit off horses, it takes three years for horses to reach their maximum value. Even chickens, you're looking at 80,000 for the small barn and you can start off with chicks if you want to, not the Dixie chicks, but these chicks and they won't start, I don't believe they start laying eggs until six months old. <clears throat> so, four to 25. So you got to factor in the cost of the pen, the cost of the animals, and then most importantly, the cost of the feed. Now, cows, sheep aren't too bad because if you've already got the equipment to do silage or hay, <clears throat> you can feed them silage and hay, TMR, or for the sheep, just hay. <coughs> Chickens, well, are very profitable, but you've got to remember to grow the right crops for them. Sorghum, barley, or wheat. Um, again, I saw in the forums recently somebody post um, that they had a pen full of chickens but they didn't have any of the feed the chickens needed because they had forgot to plant it the last year and what they had in storage had just been used up and they had six months to go. So their only option was, and they wanted to know if there was a cheaper alternative, 
their only option was to buy wheat in the big bags. $1,400 for a 1,000 liters. You're lucky if you can make $1,400 on a 1,000 liters by selling it. Maybe, maybe as part of a production. The same thing applies to productions. As I showed you, I added field 47. At this past spring, I added that field to my... Um, let's go to the sheep barn and then we'll go and have a look. Um, so yeah, I added that so I would have an extra field of grapes because I had, when I first started out with grapes, only planted these two fields, which are less than an acre each. And then I went ahead and I purchased the grape processing unit. And well, I had to turn off the processing of grape juice and leave and it <coughs> I, I figured it out in time what my mistake was so I switched it over to raisins so that I could keep the cereal factory going so again it all boils down to planning and what you can afford if you really want to get started with productions and or animals, greenhouses, productions, greenhouses, the big one is 10,000. And in my opinion, it is definitely for the amount it puts out compared to the other two, a good bang for your buck you will make that 10,000 back fairly quickly, especially if you're growing lettuce. Um, well, in the long run, it all works out. Lettuce takes longer to produce, but it's worth more. Uh, we'll take tomatoes. Produces about twice as many tomatoes, but they're worth about half the price of lettuce. Anyway, point is, you will make that back fairly quickly and then you will be able to buy another greenhouse. Plus, don't forget greenhouses, well, not the lettuce, but <coughs> the one with strawberry is necessary when you buy the bakery a long time down the road, if you're just starting off. Honey, bees, if you want to get into animals, they, again, just like the, this is the big beehive, and it costs $9,000. I did not realize until patch 1.3 came out that the honey palette uh, wasn't even patch 1.3. I hadn't realized that the honey spawn point right here was completely broken. Yes, I'd seen stories or heard stories of people having one pallet spawn on top of the other and then put it being pushed into the ground and them not being able to dig it out. So I downloaded a mod when it came out. The original spawn point would only stack one pallet and then a stack another pallet on top. So I downloaded, where are the animals, bees, the, I think it's called the extra, extra, 
extra palette. Um, just look up bees in the mod hub. Um, not a big deal because giants have now fixed it. But so I downloaded that so that I wouldn't have to put up with only two pallets at a time spawning. And because I wasn't making very much money off of honey at the time, I went slowly as my farm grew. <clears throat> I added pallets, uh, pallets. I added bees, beehives. So just one, two, three, and then four. And I was still going, why am I making no money off of honey? I'm getting two pallets a day. So I added, as the farm grew, two more pallets a day. Anyway, I have a total of eight large beehives right now. And... They're 400 liters. I am probably, as you can tell by this pile, um, bringing in, out of those eight beehives, about 2,000 liters a day of honey. And 1,000 liters of honey sells for... Well, right now, the cereal factory is paying twenty-seven sixteen. dollars uh, My other cereal factory, the farmer's market. So it's, the average price for honey is $2,500 to $3,000. Um, I'm bringing in two th at least 2,000 liters a day. So I'm making 5000 dollars a day off honey um, you certainly don't need that much to get started one or two beehives and you're making you're still bringing in a decent amount a day for honey so that's why I say don't rush into animals and if you are going to get into animals in production start small and work your way up There are probably plenty more mistakes I can think of, but, and you know, there some of them are little things like um, planting a field that needs liming. Well, you can't lime it after it's planted. Um, I just did that the other day. I wasn't even thinking. And then when I went to check to see its status, uh, the weed status it said needs lime and i'm like oh how did i miss that so there are little things like that that you don't want to forget to but i hope this gave you an idea of some of the things to avoid doing and like i said if you found this video helpful go ahead and hit like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified when more how to make money videos comes out. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye bye.